Hi everyone, it's Dominic here, and I am back in the UK, I am home from Japan. I've been home so far about two weeks, and I'm going back to Japan in two weeks time, so I'm only here temporarily. I had like university application to do, and I guess Christmas, so yeah, I'm here for a short break. And I've had some time to sort of sit down and process like everything that has gone on these past few months. Because I've been in Japan already two months, that's like a quarter of my exchange gone, which is crazy. So today I want to talk about my experiences in Japan so far, and I guess also the expectations I had, and the realities of it, because when you come from a country like the UK to Japan, well like not even just the UK, like any Western country or any country that's different to Japan, you get here and you ask, there is some sort of culture shock, and things are different, there are things that you aren't used to, and so I want to sort of talk about that today, and tell you all how that has been. So I guess I can start talking about school first, because that is where I've been the last eight weeks. So I think with school my expectations were that there would be a lot of homework. That was one thing that I heard about the Japanese schools is that they give you loads and loads of homework. It's really stressful, like really intense. And I was sort of panicking that I'd get loads of homework and it would be really awful. <laughs> but actually it turned out to be fine. Like I found that I actually got a lot less homework than I did in the UK. And I think yes I could say that because I'm the exchange student they didn't sort of want me to do all the work they do because my level of Japanese is not the same as everyone else. So I think it would not be possible for me to do all the work they do, but even still, like, I found that the work they do get is lower than what I got back home. But one thing I definitely noticed is that they do a lot more tests, like tests on a regular basis, just pretty much every single week they have tests. And I think that is really what is probably stressful about the Japanese school system. So like, English tests, classical Japanese tests, we have pretty much every single day. I have to like, do the English tests and I have to do the classical Japanese tests. The classical Japanese ones obviously are a lot harder for me to revise for, but I've sort of got used to doing them. But still, like, for Japanese students, doing that many tests, I think definitely is stressful because they finish school, and what I've noticed is, like, loads of them don't go home straight away, they stay at school and do work, and then they go to their clubs. So, <laughs> I remember, like, for the first few weeks of school, the school, school would finish, and then people continue sitting down working, and I was like, wait, can I leave? Am I supposed to sit here or what? So I'd sit after school for like half an hour, and then after a few days, like, my people in my class were like to me, you know, you can go home at 3.15, it is the end of school, it's just people stay behind to do work, so that was a bit embarrassing. But yeah, people definitely do a lot more individual work, I found, so rather than the teacher sending loads of homework, people do a lot of work by themselves, and they have a lot of tests as well. So they are constantly revising, which I think kind of sucks. <laughs> but yeah. Um, also, I thought that the lessons would be sort of just lectures by the teacher, so not really much interaction or conversation with the students and the teachers. And I think, to a certain extent, that was kind of correct, like what I thought it would be like. Some subjects I've noticed, the teachers just talk and write on the board, and then you just have to copy everything down, the teachers like writing. About half of my subjects are sort of lecture stuff, and then I guess the other half, you sort of have more conversations with the teachers. So English, we have an American teacher and a Japanese teacher. The Japanese teacher is sort of focused more on translations and stuff, so that's where I guess the teacher's writing stuff down, the students just copy it all down. But the other English teacher, there is some sort of attempt to get the Japanese students to interact. Because like in the UK, when we have lessons, we're sort of encouraged to have discussions about what we're learning. But I think in Japan, when you're learning stuff, you learn it for like the sake of the exams. So there's not really much flexibility there, which I think is a shame. But I guess, yeah, it's the system, so I can't really complain about it. But it definitely was not as bad as I thought it would be. Like, I was expecting it to be, like, really, really rigid and structured, and there would be no interaction at all. But that, like, that definitely wasn't the case. Like, there is interaction with the students and the teachers, so that was all okay. Um, I think one thing with school that I definitely worried about before I came to Japan was that my level of Japanese wouldn't be good enough for school. Because I'd been studying it for four years, but the way I'd been studying it in the UK was kind of with, an, with a focus on sort of translations and reading exercises and like comprehensions, because that was like the exams I had to take in Japanese. There was no spoken or listening part of my exam. So because of that, we didn't actually do much speaking in Japanese or like listening to Japanese. So I think like my level of spoken Japanese was like here and then everything else was like up here. So when I came to Japan I was definitely worried that my spoken Japanese would be atrocious and that I'd just suffer for the first few months. But I think like I got used to it really really quickly and I tried to speak as little English as possible. So 
I pretty much didn't speak any English when I was in Japan, other than like occasionally I would say like, oh, how do you say this word in Japanese? Like, I would ask them in Japanese how you say the English word for this, or I would, you know, I would try and use as little English as possible. So that I think definitely helped me, and I came back to the UK feeling a lot more confident in my spoken Japanese. Um, but yeah, I think linking on to speaking Japanese in Japan, I kind of want to talk about the attitudes of Japanese people to the foreign people speaking Japanese. So I, I found that if you're a foreign person in Japan and you speak to someone in Japanese, they tend to, for me, like personally, I've always been responded to in Japanese. I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, if I go to Japan and speak Japanese, they just speak English to me back. But for me, it's been like the complete opposite. If you speak to them in Japanese, they speak to you in Japanese back. And I think the main reason, sort of, is that if you approach someone in Japan and you speak to them confidently in Japanese, then they will feel more comfortable speaking to you in Japanese, but if you sort of go to them and you aren't really sure, then they will switch to English. You don't need to necessarily be good at Japanese, but I think if you're just confident in speaking it to them, then it will be fine. Like, I've never had any problems with Japanese people speaking to me in English. I've sort of been spoken to in Japanese, like, the whole time. So the next thing I want to talk about, I guess, is kind of like Japanese people and generalizations because Japan is a homogenous country like 99% of the population is Japanese so they don't have much exposure to other countries and other cultures so because of that I think Japanese people have a habit of categorizing all foreign people or foreign countries as the same I kind of I guess it's similar to the way like people in the West if they don't know Japanese culture or Korean culture or Chinese culture they'll sort of just say they'll just call it all Asian or something and they'll just assume that everything in East Asia is like the same country or something. So I've had some experiences, for example, where Japanese people would say to me something like, oh, so Japanese winters are really, really cold, so what's it like for foreign people? Like, how would they find that weather? And then I have to say, well, I'm from the UK where our winters are cold, so for me that's fine. But if it's someone else from Spain, then maybe they won't find it the same, so they maybe they'll find it a bit different or something. So I kind of have to explain that not all foreign countries are exactly the same. But, like, just sort of small things like that, it's not really, you know, nothing rude or anything. It's just something I've noticed and I have to constantly try and tell them that not all foreign countries are the same and that my experiences in the UK are very different from someone's experiences, like, somewhere else in the world. But yeah, I think it's sort of just small things like that I've noticed about Japanese people. One thing definitely that I've noticed in Japan is because I'm a foreign person, I can feel kind of like all the weight of foreign on my shoulders. So you really don't want to make mistakes. Like, I went to the, I was on the train once, I lost my ticket, and I had to go to like the ticket desk and explain to them that I lost my ticket and it was all a mess. And it was just, I felt really embarrassed, not because I lost my ticket or whatever, but because I felt like they'd be thinking to themselves, oh, it's just a foreigner, like a stupid foreigner, they've lost their ticket, they don't know what they're doing. So you kind of really want to not make mistakes in Japan, not screw up, because you're sort of representing, you know, I'm not representing just all of the UK, I'm representing pretty much all foreigners, because when Japanese people sort of see foreigners in Japan and the way they're behaving, that is the way they're going to view other foreigners. So I guess you kind of have to think about that as a foreigner in Japan, realise you are representing the world of non-Japanese. Um, so yeah, that is all I want to talk about today. I think there are loads of other things that I could say, but I didn't want to make this video really, really long. I'm going to definitely be doing another few videos while I'm here in the UK. I think the next one I'm going to be doing is going to be like a and a video. So if you have any questions, please do ask them below in the comment section. I have already got quite a few questions that people have asked me, so I'll be answering those next video. And I also have some other videos like me making sushi or like a Japanese supermarket tour that I want to show you guys. So that should be really cool. So yeah, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Everyone else, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.